capacities. And on that point, I want to address directly a claim made in recent weeks by uh, some opposition members to the effect that the protective measures here uh, introduced in response to Omicron were unnecessary and that data shows that Scotland's more cautious approach achieved no more than England's less protective approach. In response, I told Parliament last week that, uh, and again I quote, the ONS figures this week show that infection levels in England are over 20 per cent higher than those in Scotland. Uh, Willie Rennie issued a few days press release on the back of this saying that I had twisted the data. He also reported me to the impartial chair of the UK Statistics Authority. I'm pleased to say that he has now written back to Mr Rennie. Oddly, as far as I'm aware, Mr Rennie has not press released uh, the reply. Uh, so David Norgrove, the chair of the UK Statistics Authority, says in his reply that I, again quoting, correctly stated that the figure for England was more than 20 per cent higher than the figure for Scotland. Uh, but he goes further than that. While acknowledging that there are other equally accurate ways to cite the statistics, he concludes as follows. The data does suggest that the rate of infection is lower in Scotland than in England. Sending officer, to me what matters is that Scotland is doing better now than we were doing before Christmas and better now than we might have been doing had we not taken action to stem transmission. That is what is important. How we are faring relative to England or anywhere else is not, in my view, the key comparison. But given that others have sought to draw that comparison inaccurately in an attempt to undermine confidence in the Scottish Government's decisions, I hope all members will now accept the conclusion of the Chair of the UK Statistics Authority that the data I cited was indeed accurate.